Hello everyone and welcome at last to Fist of the North Star Ken's Rage, which is a character action game deceptively labeled as a Dynasty Warriors game. But don't let people lie to you. The game starts out in Medias Res, which means, well, we're at the very end of the story, but the game is using it as a tutorial. The powers we have here, we're not going to have when the game starts proper. This is more of a glimpse at how strong you'll be by the end of the game. You all right? It'll take more than that to stop me now. What's the matter? Because this uh, level is being used as a faux tutorial, that means that the enemies here are rather dumbed down compared to how strong they will be when the game starts. So even though timeline-wise this is the final level, the enemies are way weaker than they would be. And if you're seeing a lot of mechanics fly by and worrying, don't don't worry. We'll talk about those when we get to the game proper. But for now, this is just a closed-in area for us to practice our moves and see how strong Ken really is. It reminds me of the beginning of Metroid Prime, when you're all souped up and then after you escape from the pirates, your shit falls off. It's always a good sign when games manage to work tutorials believably into the main story. Something you've probably already noticed about this game is that your attacks don't really go through enemies, they stop at the enemies. And they give you a heavy, satisfying thud noise. But the fact that they stop at the enemies instead of going through them means you need to aim your attacks carefully, as you're about to see. By evenly dispersing that attack, I was able to ensure that no one would try to hit me from behind while I was doing my combo. You can use your attack animations as a reasonable indicator for the hit detection, but at the same time, the hit detection is also lenient enough that you won't get frustrated at not being able to hit enemies. There's even a handy trail that goes through the air that follows your attacks, so you can see exactly where the attacks are going and where they're going to hit at, making it a lot easier to memorize which attacks are good for which situations. This is the platforming tutorial. If we didn't come over here fast enough, the camera would have helpfully pointed out the platform to us. This game does have some minor platforming, but I think that's part of the charm, and it's what makes it more than just a beat-em-up. The level design will sometimes resemble old-school action video games, both from the 2D era and early 3D eras of gaming, which I appreciate. Up here's our first weapon. Now, the weapons are meant to be used long-term. They're just things lying around in the environment that we can use to take out our enemies easier. We can either hit enemies with the weapon straight up, or we can throw this at them. Oh, it missed. Some weapons are better just being smashed at enemies, and some weapons are better thrown. You can pretty easily use your judgment to find out which is which, just depending on the weapon's appearance. That you must bear witness to this final battle. This right here is supposed to be scripted damage, but if we mash the dodge button quickly enough, we can avoid it. The reason we were supposed to take damage right there is so we could pick up this health container, or rather this meat, just sitting in this box. Perfectly pristine meat, untouched. This section right here is meant to teach us about physics objects. There are a lot of objects in the environment that we can destroy. In fact, most of the objects in the environment we can destroy. And some of them we can blast into enemies to knock them over and deal damage. But this time we're just knocking them out of our way. You want to force your way past? Fine by me! What's the matter?
in the not-so-distant future. The world found itself enveloped in the flames of nuclear war. The seas dried up. The land cracked. All life appeared to have been wiped from the face of the Earth. But the human race lived on. The world returned to a time when sheer strength held ultimate sway. Open. Open. Please. Could I have another cup? Thank you. I feel much better. I'm Kenshiro. What's your name? Ha! Good luck! She can hear, but she can't speak. <laughs> Mind you, who would after what she went through? She saw her whole family slaughtered in front of her very eyes. Now she's just another mouth to feed for the village. Whoa. Well, sorry about that. Hey, quit staring at me, will you? It hurts. Doesn't it? This little girl's young eyes have already seen too much suffering. I did a little magic to let you speak. She will, when she wants to badly enough. Man your posts! It's seen! Seen are on their way! Get out here, Reed! You're fighting too! Hey, she doesn't want to see you get killed. Which is good news for me. Nuclear War. Humanity's greatest sin had reduced the world to ashes. Now, only violence and despair remained. The strong ruled the streets with an iron fist. 
slaughtering the weak to steal food and water. The people of this world were broken and defeated. In their despair, they clung to a single ray of hope that someone might rescue them from their misery, that a hero might free them from their tormentors, that a savior might fill the world with light once again. It was then, from amidst the rubble, that he appeared. Hey! Just who do you think you are, huh? You know who I am? You are already dead. Chapter One. A Cry from the Heart. I'll say it again. Hokuto Shinken is invincible. Alright, and now that we're in the real first level, we get our introduction to mission objectives. Some of them are optional, some of them are not. This one is mandatory. We need to protect the villagers from these thugs. Those guys are part of a gang called the Thug that's terrorizing this region. We should get out while we can. I don't think we're exactly interested in getting out of here, unless the way out of here is through each and every last one of these assholes. Just because you're strong doesn't mean you get to degrade people and strip them of their humanity. And I'm gonna teach you that by killing you to death. Thank you! I'll never forget this! So each mission objective we complete gives us a reward. For example, the next one will give us extra karma, which is our experience points that we use to buy upgrades after the fight is over. I'm sure you just noticed the camera zoom in dramatically right then, and that's because if we hit an enemy into a breakable object, we get way more experience points from them. So it's always in your best interest to use attacks with heavy knockback if there are breakable objects in the area. It's also way more satisfying to hit your enemies into something that smashes to pieces than it is just to throw them to the ground. That little yellow square beneath our health bar means we just got our signature move, the Hokuto 100 Crack Fist. And each signature move has its own strengths, and each one is best used against different enemies. That pop-up just there was trying to tell us about Meridian Shock, which is the mechanic that we use to stun enemies. The more consecutive hits we deliver on an enemy, the greater chance they have to enter Meridian Shock. When they're in a state of shock, they have electrical discharge around them, and they take way more damage from our attacks, especially our signature moves. So there is an advantage to dragging your combo out longer, especially if you want to get more points from destroying a bunch of enemies all at once. And in case you haven't noticed, we can grab enemies and run around with them. While we're running around with an enemy in our hands, all the other enemies get knocked over easily. Which means it's a great way to clear a path. When you're holding an enemy, basically you turn into a bulldozer. And you can either throw the enemy to the ground after you're done with him, or kick him into a wall. Both are equally valid options. Anything that can't be eaten is just garbage, and I hate garbage! Now we just absolutely fucking wreck those guys with physics objects. Physics objects deal immense amount of damage to enemies, and if there are any lying around, it's your best bet to use them instead of your fists. This game is really, really good at making you feel powerful. I mean, we just shot that guy into the air using our aura. But yes, physics objects are incredibly useful if they're lying around, but if they're not, don't worry about it, because there's probably something else you can use to beat bad guys with. 
like this explosive barrel over here. But we won't worry about that until we break open these soda machines. A lot of destructible objects have uh, skill points or power-ups inside of them or simply health refills. If something looks like it sticks out from the environment even a little bit, go punch it. There's probably something hiding inside. Alright, now what are we going to do with this explosive barrel? Explosive weapons are a very dangerous blessing. They annihilate enemies, but they can also deal massive damage to you if you're caught in the radius. So, you know, you might want to throw it from far away is what I'm saying. Now, of course, the explosive barrel wasn't the only way we could have tackled that situation, but it's definitely what the game wanted us to do. Later on in the game, you'll be presented with more options, and you'll get to take your pick, instead of one just being obviously superior. But since this is still early in the game, they're trying to introduce the game design to us. It looks like it's time for our second mission. This one's just like the first. We need to eliminate the thugs and save the villagers. So the best way to do this is with knockback attacks and throws. Anything that keeps the bad guys away from the villagers at all. Keep your worthless cash! All we want is food! Bring it out! Surely you can see how this game would be considered satisfying. The game was trying to introduce us to smash bonuses, but I already explained those. If you knock an enemy into a destructible object, you get more points. That may have seen a, a waste of our signature move, but the more we use our signature move, the more points we get, so we want to use it as often as we can. Usually there will be a few straggler enemies, but they're no threat on their own, and you can dispatch them very quickly because you're just that strong. Now, our normal fists will do a decent amount of damage, but of course, the meat of the combo system is in our kicks, which have a blue aura surrounding them. Green must be being held by their boss! Come on! Any attacks we use with a blue aura will be significantly stronger and will activate Ken's martial arts style, Hokuto Shinken. If a blue attack hits a weaker enemy, he will explode into a burst of blood, and we'll get way more points from that than if we just punched him to death. Attacks with aura are also capable of causing massive knockback or simply knocking enemies into the air where you can juggle them. There's no reason not to use aura attacks all the time, is what I'm saying. Check out this stupid look on that face! What's the matter? We just used a taunt, which I used a few times before now. Using a taunt causes the enemies all to hop in a pile where they're easier to hit, but it also puts them in a state of increased aggression, where they're way more likely to hit you. Before an enemy is about to deal an attack that's significantly powerful, they will glow. So when you see an enemy glowing, it's best to press the dodge button immediately, or just hit them before they can deliver their attack. Now enemies can deliver weaker attacks that won't knock you over, and they won't glow for those ones. I'm sure you can see a lot of things lying around the environment for us to have fun with. And that's because the game is confident that it showed us enough of its design that we can make our own fun with what's lying around. <laughs> You're dealing with a superior mind now! That line always completely cracks me up, and it's scripted. He says that every time. That's not a generic taunt. Well, we got ourselves caught in a group of enemies, which is bad. It's very easy to avoid getting hit, but when you do get hit, you can't get out of it until all the enemies are done hitting you. This is because even the small enemy attacks cause a tiny amount of knockback. And unless you're in the middle of a combo, that knockback will make you open to more attacks from them. Excuse me, gotta get this physics object. That was good. But yes, to summarize, all enemy attacks cause a small amount of knockback, but enemy attacks that glow will knock you completely over, which is much worse. 
Now, the room after this one is actually the boss battle. After we beat these guys, we can just progress straight forward and finish the level, but there's going to be a reason we don't want to do that. Also, important to remember, cars explode. Cars are by far some of the most satisfying objects to hit enemies into, but you should remember that they explode, and you can get caught in the blast radius. Like that. And explosions deal way more damage than enemy attacks do. So if you're gonna hit an enemy into the car, make sure the enemy is between you and the car, not beside you in the car. But I think that's almost all the fun stuff to play with in here, so we better mop up. Only one guy left. Come and get it! This is it, you scum! Get ready to die! Now that green arrow leads straight to the boss, but do you remember how I mentioned optional mission objectives? We're gonna go do one of those right now. Sometimes they require backtracking a large amount, and sometimes they're just right behind you. But almost all of them require you to go off the beaten path. Sometimes to notify you of an optional mission, a green circle will appear on the map very briefly. So if you see one of those, you might want to check that out immediately. Here's a whole bunch of guys that shoot arrows. But when we get up close, they aren't too keen on doing anything except standing there and getting hit. You can see an orange mark above one of their heads, which means that if we destroy that guy, we complete the mission objective. It's kind of funny, he was the only one out of our range, really. Alright, so you can see we completed that mission objective, and we got more spirit and defense. Now that increased defense only lasts until the end of the level, but it's kind of a big deal to have more defense at all. Now here's the largest concentration of enemies in the level, and that is difficult to deal with. We want to get behind all of them. If there's any of them behind us, it's likely that we won't be able to finish our combo before they hit us. Now remember, no matter how many enemies you kill, you won't finish the mission objective until you kill the guy with the orange marker. Thankfully, he's also marked on the map. So it's not like he's easy to miss. So yeah, running around and completing optional mission objectives does give us more buffs and more powers to work with. Again, only for this level. But now that we have increased defense and strength from these extra missions, fighting the boss should be a lot easier. Not that he was too hard in the first place, but later in the game, uh, they get surprisingly difficult. No matter how easy I may make the game seem, if you underestimate its difficulty, you will get your shit kicked in. Especially by the bosses. But even the normal enemies can be dangerous if they gang up on you. Boss characters or commanders have a guard meter, which is that shield right in their chest. After we deplete the guard meter, they will finally be vulnerable, but before we deplete it, none of our attacks will actually do anything. The quickest way to deplete their guard meter is with either a really strong attack or really consecutive fast attacks. <laughs> I'm gonna rip you to pieces! So when an enemy's health is halfway down, they slowly regain a bit of their stamina. But on the bright side, after the health is halfway down, they're also weak to one of your signature moves. It's just about finding out which one. Now because we only have one signature move at the time, Zed is weak to that one. The Hokuto 100 Crack Fist. Dealing critical damage with one of our signature moves gives us a huge amount of points. You saw those stars appear when we used our signature move on him, that means we're about to do a critical hit. And you saw how quickly his health drained as a result. Now it would be very easy to finish him off right now, but we're gonna run around the environment a little bit and grab some of the stuff they left around for us to play with. 
if you see that camera over there to the right of the screen below the map, that means that our camera is currently locked onto the boss. This only happens when we're fighting a boss character. Otherwise, the camera is always free. We can still rotate the camera, but it will snap back to the boss character after we're done pressing on the stick. So the game does implement a lock-on function, but only for the boss characters, which I think is appropriate, because you don't really need to lock on to any of the other enemies. They're so weak that your attacks can destroy them very quickly, and you don't need to juggle them excessively. Now Z does have his own signature moves, and we can see when he's about to activate them because he glows, like that. And as soon as you see him start to glow, you want to smash that dodge button. Because if you let him glow for too long, it will be too late to dodge. And then you'll be stuck in a signature move no matter what you do. That may sound easy, but it actually requires fast reflexes, because if he glows for even more than a second, you're already trapped in his combo and you can't get out. You're gonna get hit with it. There's only one more thing in this arena that we really need to get, or we don't need to get it, but it's the last thing in the arena. Yeah, that life pickup. Now, not every boss arena will have full life recoveries. That's a little bit lenient. But again, this is the first stage. Hold on. dead.